Aloha, aloha, aloha. Aloha and welcome. Hopefully you like my sign. That's for all the people that are scrolling through. So welcome to today's live stream. My name is Master Paul. And today is the 26th of July. I actually used to have a lot of fear around this day. I'll tell you that in a minute. <clears throat> um, today is how to awaken more every day. It's been a very uh, wonderful weekend. It's been a, a nice time to get caught up on a lot of uh, blockages that have been in the way of my new project. Uh, my new project has to do with cancer and using Tao wisdom, soul wisdom and the, the Tao blessings um, to assist people with transforming the uh, blockages that show up with that condition. And the wisdom and the blessings are designed to assist a person to, um, to awaken to the root cause of whatever their suffering might be. Uh, in this case, cancer, it could be a virus, it could be a, a broken shoulder. <clears throat> There's always a root cause, which is karma. And so I'm developing a program for that. And this whole weekend I spent uh, fixing up a video that I did, a three and a half hour presentation for all those that don't know anything about soul and don't know anything about karma, don't know anything about frequencies, don't understand anything about Tao and Tao blessings. So I got a lot done this weekend. I am happy about that. I'm here today, however, to serve you, to be present to you, to discuss how you can awaken more each and every day. And so I look forward to sharing some of that wisdom with you today, starting to gather a few more souls. I appreciate Facebook. Thank you, Facebook, for being a, such a valuable medium that I can serve so many souls. I had a challenge yesterday. Uh, I had to actually put into practice a lot of the things that I teach. <clears throat> and I'll share that with you in a little while so, so you can know that, um, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. Very often the, the teacher will be, will be uh, challenged. Very often the teacher will be, um, will have to put his, his mouth where his, his uh, actions where his mouth is. And so yesterday I had one of those opportunities. I'll share that with you so we can all learn from the experience. <clears throat> So we've got quite a few people jumping in and joining. Hopefully your weekend was valuable and filled with light. A welcome and aloha Alicia. Welcome Maddie. Welcome also to CJ. And aloha Becky Lafab. Welcome uh, Al Cyrus Billups. Welcome Jennifer Kara Smith. Aloha Zilki. And welcome Candy Cornett. Hi Sherry. Welcome also to uh, Susan Birchmore. Welcome Ali. And welcome to Linda Jansen. Uh, I think I said hello Shelly, if not, welcome. Welcome Archana, aloha. And welcome to uh, Aaron Lenick. Welcome also to Kristen Strachan. Welcome to Magdalene O'Meara. <coughs> aloha Rianne and aloha Diana. Welcome Lisa. Welcome Johnny. Welcome Janice Crosby. And welcome Delta, or Della, excuse me. Aloha Crystal, aloha to everybody else if I haven't mentioned your name yet. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to come to be with me. I know that there's a lot of folks that watch this after the fact because their schedule is such that like in Europe they're 1 and 2 a.m. Obviously very difficult for them to be present. But uh, thank you all for taking the time to be with me today. So we'll go ahead and we'll connect first. I'll share with you some of my experience from this weekend and then we'll move into <clears throat> how we can awaken more each and every day. So let us sit up straight, place our hands in the soul light, soul service hand position, uh, which is much like a prayer position, but we drop the left hand in front of the heart center and the right hand gently remains pointed towards heaven. Aloha and welcome, Doris. <clears throat> Close your eyes. Let us fully connect. Dear beloved divine, Tao and Source, God, our Creator, by the many, many names over the many, many eons of time, we love you, we honor you, respect you. We ask you to please be present. Dear all beings of light serving the planet of the light side, 
including angels, healing angels, and archangels, masters and ascended masters, gurus, lamas, sifus, saints, buddhas, bodhisattvas, beloved Mother Earth, stars, planets, galaxies, and universes. We love you all, honor you all, respect you all, deeply appreciate your unconditional service to each and every one of us. There is such beautiful unseen service that we never know about, saving our lives, keeping us out of harm's way, offering us little insights and tidbits when we need it most, protecting us, keeping our head above water when we're in the deepest places. We're very grateful for all that you do, even though we are unaware of it. We thank you for your presence as well today. <clears throat> Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes, love you, honor you, respect you, thank you. We ask most humbly and most sincerely, for your unconditional forgiveness. And we ask that all souls chant with us at this time this source soul song of love, peace, and harmony. Let us offer this service unconditionally. It appears that almost everybody that has joined us today has is, is, uh, been here before. <clears throat> but for all new souls that might watch this later or listen to this on, um, uh, on uh, podcasts, this is a blessing, so please make a request. Everybody else, let us join in. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula. Lula Hallelujah. Wo ai wo shin erling. Wo ai chun ran li. Wang ling rong her mu shi sheng. Song ai ping on a se. Song ai ping on a se. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. <clears throat> One more time, let us continue to serve. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, La, Li. Lula, Lula, Li, Lula. Lula, Ha, Li, Lula. Lula, Ha, Li, Lula. Oh, I was in her ling. Oh, I trun ran lay. Wang li hing rung her musher shung. Song I ping on a se. Song I ping on a se. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. <coughs> how, how, how? Thank you, thank you, thank you. So also welcome to Jota, welcome C Love, welcome Patricia Dickinson, Aloha Wayne Anthony Cohen, welcome Abby Lynn, and welcome Chai. Welcome also to Renee and Nora Patacho. Welcome uh, Lori Geis, Aloha Tammy Hunter, Aloha Angie, Aloha also to Atina, and welcome Patricia. <clears throat> so thank you all very much for joining me today. Uh, for those that are not familiar with Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony, it is a mantra 
that has extraordinary frequencies and properties to bring tremendous uh, health and balance to your life. It's one of those have to try it to know for sure, but uh, many people uh, comment quite a bit on the value of it. So I encourage you to learn more about it at lovepeaceharmony.org. <clears throat> it's also a movement. Um, they were just over in um, uh, not a country that we talk about very much. That's why I'm having trouble with uh, where I'm trying to think of. <clears throat> It'll come to me in a minute. But anyway, when they went to this country with the vitamin angels and, and literally in four days went up and down four mountains, eight hours each day to, to reach villages. Uh, and in several cases, the villagers had never seen a white person before. Um, and uh, they delivered love, peace, and harmony. And they delivered um, the uh, greatest love da'ai calligraphy. They chanted love, peace, harmony in their language <coughs> and um, brought more of it to the world. The reason they went to that country, by the way, which I'll remember in a minute, is because literally the entire country, their gross national product, you know, that's how they measure the value of a country, their gross national product is gratitude. And um, so, uh, and I think. That's not the exact right word, but I'm very close. Uh, all the chanting that they do, all of their, their spirituality is not for self, it's for serving others. Can you imagine a whole country where the entire citizenship only chants to serve others? It's an amazing country. So uh, it was the first on the list of, of many that we will go to to serve. <coughs> and welcome also to Jesse Andresen. So this weekend was uh, very valuable, very busy. I. Um, I was pounding away, uh, headstrong, nonstop, on a uh, video that I was uh, creating for <clears throat> the condition known as cancer. It's a condition. It's a label. It is something that reflects an energetic blockage in the body that has a precursor, just like anything in our life has a precursor, that precursor being our spiritual debt or karma. And, um, <clears throat> but because there's so few out there that understand that the reason that condition came to them or any condition for that matter is because of spiritual debt I in the process of creating an entire program around it to assist people to give them a chance at survival because all of the things they're doing on the physical world level can have uh, historically speaking according to the records out there have between a zero and seventy percent efficacy on average across the board but what happens to that other 30%? No matter what somebody throws at it, it they still uh, lose. <clears throat> and again, it's, it's the same. It has to do with the spiritual debt. So I dedicated a couple of hours to this uh, presentation. Several of you saw it about, uh, about two weeks ago. And I spent this whole weekend redoing uh, aspects of the video so that it is presentable to the general public. And it was very trying, um, very uh, grueling mentally. But you don't care about that. Uh, I'll share it all with you when I, when I get it ready. But there was an experience I had that I want to share with you before I go into uh, this subject today of awakening. Because um, awakening happens in every moment and I had that opportunity yesterday. So I was working on the computer <coughs> and I found that uh, while I was there, uh, Facebook's got this new little pop-up window that comes on your computer screen when somebody posts something. And somebody had posted on one of my recent videos. And the video was um, uh, on the universal law of universal service. And somebody posted something that was not pleasant. And, um, you know, I went, I went to look at it to make sure I read it correctly. And basically what they said was um, that I'm only after money. And, uh, you know, wow, it's like a stab to the heart. It's like, wow, you know, this, this really hurts. Okay. Uh, now, I know my teacher, Master Shah, he gets stabbed like that all the time. Uh, people have really no clue the amount of service he offers to humanity and truly who he is and what he's doing to serve humanity. And regardless of that, that's the first time that I'm aware of that I've been, uh, you know, poked that specifically in that way. So, um, I had to make a choice. Now, do I want to engage this person? Uh, do I want to delete it? How do I want to handle this? And uh, uh, I made the choice to not engage this person um, because when they made that comment, they were coming from a place of hurt. They were coming from a place of, um, of um, their belief at that moment in time. Uh, maybe they had financial concerns and they were looking for somebody to offer blessings. Uh, and, and they made a conclusion that I'm only about the money. 
Um, but what I found myself for the next couple of hours, and even though I did a forgiveness practice almost right away, I found myself for the next couple of hours wanting to defend myself and go through my looping in my head. You know, well, uh, she doesn't really understand. She must never have watched my videos to the end. or She doesn't really, hasn't done enough homework, or whatever it was. So I was in the, um, the validation process in the... Um, 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 wanting to, to, to stand up for myself, which is ego. And so um, I, I watched, you know, I watched my monkey mind go through its processes. <clears throat> I did several forgiveness practices. And what, I did, what did I do forgiveness practice for? I said, dear this soul, please forgive me in this and all lifetimes that I have um, offered wrong teachings, caused you to fall off your soul journey, um, lied, cheated, or stolen from you or family or loved one, uh, created financial difficulty for you, um, you know, was a false prophet or anything of that nature that has caused you to, to say these unpleasant things. Um, you know, please forgive me. I forgive you. And even though I did it a couple of times, I still had to go through an entire day of processing. And so it's an example of awakening. So I'm, I'm using that as a, as a footstep for today's teaching because awakening is a process of recognizing that our life has a purpose and it's certainly not accidental uh, whatever comes to us in any given time and we do have heavens teams we do have <coughs> um, uh, guides angels saints God uh, and so many more here to help us and there are literally um, seven billion souls out there for us to interact with not including ourself and in many cases we are our own worst enemy uh, when it comes to lack of self-love uh, lack of <coughs> um, alignment to to uh, what we know it's very easy to be the the sage person that talks to somebody else about because we can see from the outside what their problems are and offer them advice but when it's our own stuff that's when we really have to step up to the plate and that's when we have to move towards those steps towards enlightenment so part of awakening is recognizing that literally every single moment is an opportunity to more further awaken now awakening has a direct association to the to the heart chakra uh, the what is also called the the fourth soul house uh, master shah refers to it as both the fourth soul house and the message center and I offered a teaching on this at uh, Master Shah's Tao Healing Center in Honolulu about a month ago. And I, wasn't, I didn't know what I was going to necessarily teach on. Uh, the vast majority of the masters uh, were at the event in Belgium with Master Shah. And so there was about 15 or 20 students in the room. And it was a, uh, a relaxed evening. And so I just tuned in. I said, Heaven, what did I teach about? And I heard, go to the basic foundational practices. I said, okay. So what are the foundational practices? Lower Don Tian, Snow Mountain Area, Heart Center. So I decided to focus on the Heart Center. And I drew, uh, you know, on the little whiteboard, a uh, square human body with a line down the middle. And I said, you know, heaven's above, earth is below. Uh, heaven and, and Mother Earth are aspects of yin and yang. And in the center of our human body is this channel that runs right to the center. So Mother Earth's frequencies, energies, and love and blessings is going through us. And then Heaven's Mother Earth's frequencies are going through us. Uh, they're always constantly blessing us. Why can't we always feel them? Why can't we see our angels standing right next to us? Every single one of you right now has a, at least one angel, one guide, or one saint, one Buddha, one Bodhisattva, standing next to you right now at this moment i i would bet my life on it uh, why because every soul in humanity has a heavens team they're standing right next to you they're serving you they're blessing you we cannot see it or feel it or touch it or taste it therefore it must not be real awakening is recognizing that we have more uh, going on than our five senses can comprehend and awakening is about re, um, chipping away at the little stuff 
that keeps us from attuning to the higher truths that are literally surround us, surrounding us in every moment. Now you'll hear a variety of things out there. You know, we live in a matrix. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, um, this is all an illusion. You know, even our beloved Einstein said that yes, life is really an illusion, but it's a damn good one. You know, it's it's very very real, and that's not the exact words, but really close. So, you know, as far as a physicist, he's like, yeah, it, it's really, you know, kind of not real, but it sure feels real. And so that's where we're at. So from a spiritual perspective, from the teachings that Master Shah brings to the table that I have uh, uh, applied and accordingly catapulted m my, uh, my awakenings, I want to offer you some of those same tools. And we go back to the heart center. So heaven is above us, Mother Earth is below us for simple understanding purposes. They could, of course, be reversed. But um, uh, for understanding purposes, we have yin and yang. Now, Creator creates all things, all stars, all planets, all universes, Mother Earth, Heaven, you and me. We are a child of Heaven and Mother Earth. We are a child of the male and the female energy, of the yin and the yang energy. So the human being is constantly, and I do mean constantly, being nourished by heaven and earth. When I say heaven, I say that loosely. I don't mean it uh, just, you know, angels and, and, and whatever you can think of. I mean the cosmos. We're constantly being nourished by them. Why can't we feel it? Why don't we know it to the degree that maybe we'd like to? A lack of awakening is why. Awakening, <clears throat> our biggest blockage to awakening is the heart center. What does awakening mean? You're going to find a million different uh, possible explanations. I'm going to offer a flow. I'm going to ask for a flow to speak out what heaven wants to say about what is awakening. Let's see if it, if it rings true for you. Aloha, we have several folks joining. Welcome, uh, Janie Markham. Welcome also to Lori Hickam Nicholson. And welcome also to Michelle Lynn Gill. Uh, anybody else that's jumped in there? Uh, Jacqueline, Christy Weigel. Welcome to everybody else. Please forgive me if I haven't seen you yet. And thank you all for hitting the share button. Thank you, Corrado. So I'm going to do a flow <coughs> and ask Kevin for giving us a teaching on what is awakening. And then I will do practices with you to further uh, bring the possibilities of awakening. Okay? Welcome also to Sarah Rose. Welcome, Corrado. How? This is a spiritual mother awakening is nothing more than truth there are currently quite a few more than seven billion truths on this earth that is just what you know about imagine seven billion distinct and unique truths. Awakening is the recognition that every single soul's truth is true. Your truth is different in this moment today than it was a year ago. Some are listening to this at this moment with one eyebrow raised, one hand on their chin. They are wondering, is this true? They are comparing this information to all that they have learned prior to this moment. And this is their truth, which is perfect. And that is their level and degree of awakening. But last year, this same soul that may be wondering of the accuracy of this information would have very potentially denied it. 
So is there awakening more now than it was a year ago? This is the nature of awakening. It is the allowance of all thoughts, possibilities, and perspectives free, this is the key, free of judgment, criticism, and any thought, word, or action that misaligns it or creates a lack of respect for that. Awakening is the recognition that Creator is all thoughts, all words, all actions, all souls in their state, form, and delivery of their thoughts, words, and actions. You have been told and many believe that we are all one. This does not stop with the recognition of a human being all one. It includes all thoughts, all words, all actions. And each soul represents the entirety of your Creator. Therefore, awakening is the further alignment to these truths. The awakening is a natural process that can be facilitated and enhanced substantially by employing various spiritual practices and releasing various spiritual debts in combination. The more attention to these activities, the greater the release of the physically, emotional, mental, spiritual blockages that is inhibiting the awareness associated with the awakening. Listen one more time if need, as the answer is actually very simple. It is, the, the hard part is the application of the answer. It requires action, due diligence, intention, and responsibility. This is where the vast 90% fail. Therefore, they remain unawakened to the degree possible. It has been my honor to offer this explanation. This is a spiritual mother. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome also to Michelle Lynn. Welcome, Vinny uh, McNamara. And welcome to Sam and everyone else that I haven't seen. Uh, please forgive me if I haven't mentioned your name. So, uh, thank you for that flow from the spiritual mother. Uh, so, the, the simple version is, what she was saying, is um, if we can operate in a judgment-free environment, in a observational, open-hearted condition, in which zero judgment for self or other is ever uh, thought or spoken or acted upon, where every single person's perspective, that of the, of the uh, Bible thumper, that of the, um, the, the Jew, that of the, um, the person that, that believes in hell, uh, uh, every single person's perspective, uh, the person that says 911 is, is a scam, and the person that says 911 was, was you know, 100% real, it doesn't matter uh, the, the seven billion potential perspectives on how to raise a child, uh, who is God, uh, uh, um, the, the, the conditions of earth, whatever it might be. Every single one of us are right according to the wisdom that came through in this flow because we are right where we are at. But if we stick with I am right, this person is wrong, then we have a, a dilemma. That's where ego interjects. Ego is, in almost every case, what inhibits us from awakening. Ego is, I need to defend where I am at because it is what makes me strong. I need to defend my thoughts, I need to defend my beliefs, I need to defend my whatever it might be, because if I do not, then what 
could I possibly become? Uh, I might have to rethink things. And if I have to stop and rethink things, well then I lose all of this last 30, 40, 50 years of gain. The soul that is awakened adds perspectives, considers perspectives, honors perspectives. Uh, the person that is awakened offers no judgments, no criticisms. The ability to get from where the vast majority of us are at in this ego place to the place of ego freeness where we honor, acknowledge, and accept every person's thought, word, and action equally without judgment, without criticism, uh, takes quite a bit of movement. And the blockage area is the heart center. And the reason, very simply, goes back to what I was stating in the beginning. Welcome also to uh, Titiana. Uh, welcome Ari. Welcome Alicia Sosa. Welcome also to Denny. Um, thank you all for joining. And thank you also for sharing. So, do you think Buddha? Do you think Jesus? Do you think Mother Mary? Do you think Kuan Yin? Do you think Krishna? Do you think any of the enlightened beings that we know of carry thoughts, words, and judgments? Do you think when, when somebody uh, calls Jesus to come and help, the Buddha doesn't come? No, you're wrong. Many, many souls of light come. When people call Buddha, Jesus comes. In heaven, they're all brothers and sisters. There's no animosity. There's no separation. There's no I'm better than you. There's no I'm higher or lower than you. There is simply uh, unconditional love. That's what they keep coming to teach us. Down here, we're filled with conditional love. We're filled with conditions. So when, how do we go from where we're at to a place of awareness as these great beings of light? We do that by clearing the blockages in our channel, clearing the blockages in our heart center specifically. Because as our heart level blockages clear, um, which have a massive range, all of the emotions, all the relationship stuff, major, major financial blockages, uh, uh, massive amounts of karma blockages or have associations with the heart center. Um, our spiritual channels, our ability to hear heaven, see heaven, uh, communicate with heaven, all have associations with the heart center. So if we can just put a whole lot of focus on this center, clearing the blockages step by step, then what happens is we actually start becoming more cognizant, more aware of our interconnectivity to all souls and all things. We eventually become like these great beings before us. You know, the great, the, all these great beings have a patternistic uh, program. They go by themselves. They sit underneath a tree or they sit in a cave or they go train with the great masters. Um, they basically create the highest conditions of purity uh, to where their channel that connects them heaven and earth could remember because heaven and earth we are basically the child of heaven and earth um, where that channel that runs through the human body where the seven chakras are a channel becomes so pure and wide so free of blockages that they become the equivalent of a living uh, being of light on earth at the time there are quite a few of those walking amongst us but they don't announce themselves as such that would be ego um, but they're here to serve and they are doing the best they can a lot of those souls are children um, we put labels on them uh, but unfortunately but um, they are very very pure beings of light that have come into a very very dense energy and so it's it can be very difficult for the children but they are very awakened and we as as adults have to be responsible for them to make sure we don't close down their awakeness and we can do that by awakening ourselves so the message center is also called the fourth chakra it is a, uh, a very very important energy center not one to be ignored and certainly one that it would be very valuable for you to do practice with every single day the message center is a fist size energy center. Uh, it resides just behind the chest plate in the sternum, about uh, two inches inside the body, roughly the center of the body. And it acts as a major dam in the channel uh, that runs between, uh, through your body, through your torso, uh, through your first soul house, all the way up to the top of your crown. And this channel, uh, each one of the chakras can be a blockage area, but the, the, the central channel Four soul houses definitely 
uh, always the biggest blockage area. When we have an open heart, we can hear things even about us where people can be just sideways about us and we can be in a place of compassion and love because we, we can us we can uh, we can understand that person's pain and suffering and wh why they're yelling at us that they must be in great pain they must have uh, must have had some great deal of expectations that weren't met and they're very upset at this time and we just stay in this place of love and compassion while they you know decompress a person that has an open heart can be that way a person that has an open heart can look at all of the war that's happening in the world, all of the calamities, all of the manipulations, all of the, of the, the massive, massive, massive cover-ups and everything that's happening in the world. Um, but the, the one with an open heart doesn't complain about it. The one with an open heart does things to bring more love and peace and harmony uh, because that action will always have a better effect. That 51% positively will always be better than that 51% negative response to something negative. So an open heart gives us the opportunity to awaken enough to see that truth. Granted, it's not always true. You know, I, I've pondered if I had a daughter and, and she was, you know, uh, somebody messed with her, you know, probably want to go rip their tongue out or something like that, right? As a father, of course, you just want to go, you know, hurt the person. But it still would not be the appropriate thing to do and the enlightened soul would recognize the nature of the spiritual karma that may have come to that daughter there would be a lot of healing that would need to occur but it would have to happen in a much higher level so we have a long way to go awakening is the process of doing the steps one of the last things um, the spiritual mother said was the message is easy the activity requires your personal action. There's no one going to do it for you. That's part of the big problem. Uh, as a humanity, we are all kind of been kept in an energetic lull where we are not um, reaching our anywhere close to our highest potential um, as a result of the great deal of strife that is a, a current in humanity where the negativity is roughly 60% and the positivity is roughly 40%. It's like this constant barrage that inhibits us from awakening but we still have to trudge through it. It's like swimming upstream. In order to make that upstream swim easier, we have to do our part. What does that look like? It looks like clearing your chakras. It looks like clearing your, your, your blockages. Now, there are many ways of accomplishing this. I have no judgment or criticism about the different ways that are out there. They most likely all have some effect or they wouldn't last as long as they do. I'm gonna share with you the way I've been taught by my teacher, Master Shah. Uh, who is a Qigong master and through his tutelage I have witnessed um, great uh, benefits along the spiritual path the spiritual channels opening and more so what he would recommend uh, for a heart opening practice includes the four powers soul power body power mind power sound power sound power is what you chant is what you become for example if you chanted divine love uh, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you'd literally become divine love frequency. What you chant is what you become, that's sound power. Body power, where you place your hands is where energy goes. So by placing our hands either over the heart center or in different positions in which the heart center is impacted, you will have more frequency coming to that area. Body power. S um, Mind power, everybody knows, creative visualization, where you place your focus is where energy goes. Mind power has been available to humanity for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, but it has reached the end of its efficacy. Soul power, the next power, is the most important. We always employ the other powers because they all facilitate a movement of blockages. They all facilitate a, a gathering of higher frequencies. The soul power is is literally where humanity is headed uh, we are all things soul and humanity is awakening to that truth so in moving into soul power we learn to apply it how do we do that we do what's called say hello say hello is acknowledging the inner souls and the outer souls at the beginning of this live stream for those that came in a little late i invited in the outer souls Divine Tao, Source, Buddha, God, Allah, Jesus, Mother Mary, uh, Kuan Yin, 
all beings of light, angels, healing angels, archangels, because all beings of light are brothers and sisters. They're all under the same creator. So we invite them all in. That's the outer souls. The soul power recognizes uh, something unique that some of you might not comprehend or understand called inner souls. Inner souls are all the souls of the energy and matter that make up everything in our body, our organs, our systems, our cells, our cell units, everything that makes up our body has a soul, part of the divine creator. It has a spirit of the creator in it. Therefore, everything has a soul. So we also connect with it. So let's do this together. Everybody sit up straight. And what we're going to do is we're going to place one hand, it doesn't matter if it's your left or right hand, over your heart center, okay? And the other palm over your lower abdomen. Now you want to leave a little space there, don't push, always leave space. And we're going to connect to the sole of our heart center. So close your eyes, take a deep breath in, and release. Take a deep breath in. And release. Take another deep breath in. And repeat after me if it is comfortable for you. Dear my beloved Creator, Divine Tao Source, God. My name is, state your name. I love you. I am so very, very, very grateful for all that you do for me. Could you please come sit in my heart center? Bless me to awaken more in this moment and each and every day. Bless me to see the many opportunities you bring to me to awaken. Please bless me to open my heart, release negativity, all forms of negative mindsets, negative beliefs, Ego, please bless me to release judgment towards myself and others, criticism of myself and others, loathing of myself and others. Please bless me to open my heart to see my true soul self. Please bless me to open my heart to more fully comprehend the oneness of all life so that I can be a part of the solution not part of the problem thank you dear the soul of my message center my heart center I love you honor you deeply appreciate you you have the power to open yourself you have the power to release blockages you have the power to release lifetimes of negative memories, old patterns, ego, financial blockages. You have the power to forgive painful relationships. You have the power to open yourself to love fully and completely. You have the power to awaken more in each moment. Do a great job. And with your eyes closed, we're now going to incorporate the other powers. So you would visualize in your heart center the beings of light that you have asked to come. If you ask Jesus to come, see Jesus sitting in your heart. If you ask Buddha to come, see Buddha sitting in your heart. If you ask God to come, see God in whatever way that you see God sitting in your heart. We're going to chant divine love. It's a very beautiful and simple mantra, but it carries very high frequency. Very often the simple way is the big way. The big way is the simple way. So by simply doing this, we are clearing lifetimes of blockages and awakening in this moment. So with a smile on our face, let us visualize beloved divine Tao Source any being of light in your heart center, golden light, and let us with our greatest love chant divine love. Divine love, 
Some of my treasures, send them to you for additional blessings. All the downloads treasures I've received for divine love, Tao love, source love. Turn on. Please offer blessings to all those watching, all those listening. As appropriate, bless them to open more their message center. Clear blockages, more fully awaken. Let us continue. Divine love. Divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine. Divine love. The word da I means greatest love. I will ask this soul to serve each of you. Dear the soul of da I, greatest love. The countless blessings in the da I calligraphies given to humanity in Master Shah's books. Could you please subdivide, come from the books? Go to each of those watching, each of those listening's heart center. And as they chant, Da I and greatest love, please bless them to more fully awaken, to open their hearts more each and every day. Da I, 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 Greatest Love, Greatest Love, Greatest Love, Greatest Love Da I Da I Opens my heart and soul Da I Da I Creates awakening Thank Thank you, Dai. Thank you, greatest love. Open my heart and soul. Bless my awakening. Dai, Dai. Dai, Dai. Da I Da I Da I Da I Now I want you as I continue to serve, you can continue to chant silently or out loud, but I want you to tap your message center with your fingers. Tap your message center. Da I Da I Rattle free the blockages. Da I Da I 
da ai da ai da ai da ai now there is a physical practice you can do which is putting your hands in prayer position and with the inside of your palms thumping your chest like this if it doesn't hurt or even if it hurts only a little bit do this do it with enough force to create an impact but don't make yourself tired da i 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 e sure da wu tiao ji Repeat after me, if it is comfortable. Dear the soul of the treasures that have come to me, the divine Tao and source love, I love you. Thank you for your service. Could you please bless me to release the blockages that are inhibiting me from fully awakening. Can you please bless me to release negativity? Can you please bless me to release grief? Can you please bless me to release judgment? Could you please bless me to release old relationships? Could you please bless me to release old problems that I hang on to. Can you please bless me to release self-righteousness and ego? Can you please bless me to release unpleasant thoughts about myself? Please bless me to awaken to the love that you have for me can you please bless me to awaken to the love that my beloved creator has for me can you please bless me to awaken to the love that my heavens teams guides angels and saints have for me can you please bless me to awaken more every day i am very grateful thank you Thank you, thank you. Continue. Da I da I, greatest love melts all blockages, purifies my heart and soul. Da I da I. Greatest love melts all blockages, purifies my heart and soul. And now I want you to do a forgiveness practice to yourself. Please repeat after me if you are comfortable. Dear my soul, dear myself, I love you. Please forgive me for my limited thinking. Please forgive me for thinking I had to do everything by myself. Please forgive me for filling in the negative thinking, judgments, and self-criticism after I left the family. I used to allow others to do it for me, but I have now done it for myself. Please forgive me for this. I truly wish to release these old patterns 
please bless me to release the blockages that I have allowed myself to develop. I forgive myself. I forgive these old patterns. I accept that I am perfect in the eyes of my Creator and I no longer need to think these old negative thoughts. Accept the love that is coming to you now. Divine love, 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 divine love. <clears throat> and now, offer your gratitude to divine, to Tao, to source, to your creator, to Buddha, to Jesus, whoever you invited, in your heart, bow down to those beautiful souls. In your heart, bow down to your heaven's team, guides, angels, and saints, who are always with you in all time. Offer your gratitude. Ask them to please do not give up on you, to assist you to awaken more each and every day, to assist you with seeing that anything that happens has a reason and there is opportunity for growth opportunity for awakening ask them to bless you to enlighten you especially in those times that feel difficult so that you can not have those experiences more than once so that you can simply learn the lesson and move on and awaken more awakening is alignment uh, for our bow down thank you thank you thank you all souls you may remain as long as you like when you are ready please respectfully return so thank you all for doing that practice with me if you have any sharings you'd like to share then I'm sure others would like to see that. Thank you uh, for all those new souls that have joined us in this last 20 or so minutes. Uh, welcome Norma Louise. Welcome also to Linda. Um, welcome Catherine. Welcome to Heather. And welcome Itza. Welcome Cynthia Marie. Aloha Robin Toth. Welcome Janie Markham. Uh, Janie wanted to know who was the spiritual mother that I channeled. Um, the reason I said spiritual mother is because the message I got was that there will be somebody either watching now or somebody watching later that could have a mindset. If I say it's this one or this one, they might go, uh, I'm not interested. So I was told to say the word spiritual mother. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, thank you, Brianna. You're very welcome. Oh, wonderful. Congratulations, Lisa. Very good. So, um, Master Shah says the big way is extremely simple. He teaches a great deal of one sentence secrets. That one is one of them. It's a, it's a Tao a statement um, that is commonly used uh, when you study that system. Uh, he does not teach Taoism. Uh, but he had studied it and he says that that is a true statement the big way is extremely simple you know, love melts all blockages all we need is love it's very very simple sometimes not so easy to employ and so when we uh, do something this simple really just chanting using the four powers body power mind power sound power soul power by placing our hands 
by chanting divine love and da I, greatest love, by uh, visualizing and inviting in the beings of light into our heart center. Although the practice itself can be very, very simple, it is very, very profound. And one of the main reasons why is because it literally cuts out the external world that blocks us from just being present. It blocks us from just simply um, that time that we need to reconnect to our purity, to our original self. And so some people have difficulty, for example, with meditation, mind so busy. Well, this is an example of an excellent practice for you because you're employing your creative visualization so your mind can't be ramping around elsewhere. You're chanting, that's using an aspect of your mind as well. And you're visualizing and you're asking the souls to be there. You're involved on an emotional level, clearing the blockages. And there's huge, huge, huge benefits. No different than a meditation, and in many cases a lot better. It is the consistency of a very simple practice of this nature that creates awakening each and every day. By doing something like this, your heart becomes more open and you move into later that day and you maybe run into a coworker, the one that says unpleasant things about you, and you walk up to that coworker and you say, I wish to offer you my greatest forgiveness. I wish to ask for forgiveness. I know I must have said or done something that has hurt you. Uh, or, or I, I truly don't know what it was, but I truly want to apologize. Now they're of course going to be very, very shocked. You're just not going to know what to think about that. Now you don't do that. It's just an example. But you would not have the thought of doing that, nor the power to do that, because of your ego before, uh, the hurt self before. But when you do a practice like this every day, you open your heart. And when your heart is open, you don't take things personally. You give love instead. And in this way, you, you unwind the karma. And with each karma that is unwound, you, uh, you're not fighting the uphill battle. Therefore, more and more awakening comes. So awakening happens in every moment. And our heart center, being connected to heaven, being connected to earth, we, we must be responsible for keeping this, this beautiful soul open. For with this beautiful soul, we can truly um, make such a huge difference in, in, in our lives and in other people's lives. And it's as simple as being self-responsible and doing a practice similar to this on a consistent daily basis. It will allow you to be present to your children, your husband, your co-workers, and everybody else and not create new karma, potentially clear unpleasant karma, and move forward in life versus backwards. So thank you for the opportunity to share this wisdom with you today. I hope it served you. Thank you for all your responses. I did see them flying by. Um, you're very welcome. Thank you, Johnny. I'm so grateful that this opened your heart and it served you well. Uh, thank you all for joining. And Sherry, you came in a little late. I hope you're able to go back and watch this uh, from the beginning. For all those that came in half time, do recommend you go back to the beginning uh, when you can. It is always recorded on my Facebook page. If you're new, you can hit the subscribe. That way you'll know when I go live. It's on my Facebook page. If you prefer podcasts, just go to my website. All the information is listed above the video. And uh, you can actually um, uh, get my podcast. You can have them come to your email, uh, you know, like three or four times a week or there's some on your phone. Or, you know, some people have different time limitations. So it's a great way to listen on your own time. Okay? So love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to all the beings of light who came to offer their service. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Bye bye everybody. Mahalo.